Hi guys, welcome back to part two of our cut and polish segment. Before we get started today, let's just take a close up look at a couple of the tools I'm using. Also the uh, one, two, three stage system from 3M, the perfected system, and uh, explain what the different compounds are and the different color pads that work with them. Also the different size pads we can use, um, different size bases to polish out different areas of the car. So let's first just take a look. I wanna show you this uh, our science project here. Some of you guys might remember this from uh, earlier in the series. This was a leftover uh, clear coat right after we painted the shell and I marked off uh, where, where it was located at that time. So uh, at the end of the day this, uh, this thing tightened up and became hard and solid and over time has completely evaporated and shrunk down to what you see now. So uh, really incredible amount of shrinkage taking place there. Uh, more obvious to see it in this way than what's actually taking place on the car, um, even though the very same thing here is taking place on the surface of your paint. Um, and that's really important to know this before we get started on any kind of sanding or polishing because the material now that we have on the car, we've got less solid mass to work with than if we did this process right after spraying the car. Let's just say we went in a week after the fact uh, much more plump, much more forgiving to sand and polish on than it is now. So we got to be a lot more careful um, and a lot more sensitive with everything going on. However, uh, by waiting it out, what we do is we eliminate a lot of shrinkage problems that pop through um, after you finish your car. Uh, let's say a year, year after the fact, if you go in and cut and polish your car too soon, then you start seeing things pop through uh, by waiting it out and uh, letting it tighten up first. You kind of eliminate a lot of that. So here's a close-up look at our roof sander. This is a six millimeter sander, uh, which means a six millimeter orbital rotation. Before I purchased this particular one, I contacted 3M and asked them what is the correct sander to be using uh, with their Trizac sanding pads. And they had recommended uh, to use something between 3 16 and 5 16 inch orbital rotation uh, to use a sander as best and to not use the Trizac sanding pads with an orbital uh, polisher. Works best with a sander. So uh, I bought this particular one because of, because of its ratings. Uh, it was a new refined model, uh, very quiet in relation to some of the other models, and the orbital size was uh, right on target. However, since uh, playing around with it, yeah, it's, it's quite a sander. Very forgiving, very smooth, and uh, got a lot of a lot of things you, it will do that you wouldn't think it would do because of the size of it, uh, even getting into smaller areas and inside radiuses, uh, really uh, amazing. So if you're looking for a good sander, I recommend this one. All right, so let's have a quick look at our polishing compounds. So this is a 3M's Perfected system. It's a one, two, three compound type system. So they start off with a number one, so you'd use this first, uh, being a rubbing compound type application. Um, using a white sponge applicator and also on the front of these they're, they show the color of the type of applicator you would want to use with each color so it's not hard to uh, figure it out and then a number two this is basically where we get our shine back here this is, uh, this is probably the one I'll be starting with um, if you use your Trizac system up to 5000 grit that should theoretically eliminate the need um, for, your, for your number one compound we can just go right to number two as um, soon as we like everything, everything looks real good, then we just finish it off with this as like a finishing glaze, really. So this is really gonna, just going to be like a swirl mark remover and a, and a refiner. And then after that, uh, we can go right to wax. And here's the different uh, sponge type applicators I'm using. I'm using a waffle type heads. Um, got a, a variety here to choose from. I don't know how things are going to turn out as I work through the car. Just want some... Uh, variation to choose from. Got a honeycomb type, smooth type, and then also some smaller uh, different ones there. And then we can use those with our random orbital guy, which is this one here. Um, big areas we can use our direct drive, and then also uh, small areas. We can put in a die grinder. Even a drill would be okay for some of these pads. Okay, let's get the car rolled out and let's get going. Okay, getting ready to start our 3000 Trizac. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the surface down, uh, distilled water only for now and throughout the duration of polishing. 
so we don't have any chance of any kind of mineral deposits that might build up with overspray. So we're going to clean it up. Make sure we're really clean. Okay, setting up our random orbital sander. So I've got my 3000 grid on there, centered on our interface pad. Definitely want to use an interface pad for this, particularly with the shape of this car. So anytime you got radiuses or round surfaces, uh, interface pad is going to be your safest bet. So what you want to be watching for here is how I'm feathering the throttle and how I'm rolling the pattern I'm going to be using as I'm going over the, the rounded surfaces. So it's never going to be this way. It's going to be this way. And I'm going to be working a motion that looks something like this. Let's take a look at that and see how that works. All right, here we go. bit more right there not much but uh, we're just about there okay just gonna kind of work the fender now so uh, wipe it down I'm gonna try and overlap everything I've done already and uh, just move through the whole fender <laughs> starting to look good okay so then we got to be really careful when we get close to an inside radius and then how we're going to handle this outside edge I'm just going to walk the sander right up to it uh, back off on the throttle and, and just feather it in and that's all we're going to do there all we want to do is just change the sheen not overwork it Okay, see the different color there? That means we haven't really touched the edge of that yet. So once we're there, we know the inside looks good, then we can just finish up with a light touch. All right, there we go. Ready for uh, 5,000 grit. And then between every pass, every time we pull the sander off and then reapply, we want to wipe the fender and then we want to rinse our, rinse our Tri-Zac. Um, that should be good enough. And then that's enough moisture on there to start your next pass. All right, so this side's complete, 3,000 grit. Let's go in close and see exactly what it looks like. So we're starting to see some shine now. You can see, you can see some reflection in there and also a uh, uniform pattern. So uniform sheen, uh, all our 2000 grit scratches are gone and everything looking fairly consistent. So now let's uh, kick it up to the 5000 grit.
Okay, just finishing up now with our Triazac process. That took about five hours to get through the whole thing complete. Um, real forgiving system, yeah, just real, real nice, easy to use. Uh, nothing really to stress about while you're going through your work. You can see exactly what everything needs. Uh, just doing a little bit at a time. Uh, real uniform finish and uh, sheen. You can see our 5000 grit actually has got a little bit of a shine going there. And that should help out once we start compounding. Also, you can see in contrast, let me inside this lip here, you can see some of the old orange peel in relation to our new smoothed out finish. And take a look at our roof here. Got a nice reflection going there. So, not super shiny yet, but we're getting there. Once we start using the compounds, this thing's going to really, really shine up. Get a nice deep gray come back. All right, and then the last thing I want to do before we get started with our foam buffing pads, you can see I've pulled the blue vinyl tape off our uh, rain gutter rail here. And the reason I put that on there was to give a little protection while I'm block sanding and then also uh, occasionally bumping into it with my random orbital sander. That gives it some protection so it don't chip anything. Uh, but you can see the difference between, uh, you know, anything that's unsanded versus our sanded area. There's quite a bit of difference. So I'm just going to look the whole car over. Uh, anything I can find, that I think I can get a, a finishing pad in there. I'm going to tune up by hand first. Also, uh, this, this edge here um, gets a, a finished piece of trim on top of that. However, you do see maybe eighth inch of that. So I need to get in there and tune that up by hand. And then also... Uh, I think I can squeeze some Trizac sanding pads in here and clean that up just a little bit better. So uh, get all that done by hand first, just so everything's cut up at the same stage. And then we'll move on with our buffing pads. Okay, let's just have a quick look at our uh, rain gutter here. So what I did is I just hand sanded with 1500-2000 and then followed it up with our sponge Trizac pads by hand. And it does a real nice job blending everything in. You can see now it looks a lot better in relation to how it was. And buffer would be no problem on that. Okay, 3M foam pad. I'm using a uh, gray waffle type on this one. Uh, so I'm just putting my cream on there, rubbing it in, and priming the pad. You've got plenty on there. And this is uh, the way we want to apply it for all the various compounds on the edges should be enough and then uh, lots of water so whenever I'm doing this I'm using probably better than 50% water to compound ratio uh, here we go Also, very light pressure, just letting the foam pad with those waffle frame to prints uh, do the work. Just letting the pressure come off of there. I'm not trying to get to here with the pressure. Alright, see the shine's almost all the way back just with that one step. Nice and smooth, very shiny. All we're going to do now is work out our uh, deeper swirl marks and put a real high gloss on there. Okay, and then number two compound. I like this uh, this hex type pad, and uh, I got this from Auto Geek, which is a really good supplier on any of your uh, finishing compounds or foam pads, even uh, even your tooling. Great place to get your stuff there. Okay, so uh, spread it around nice and good. Wet the pad, wet the fender. Now let's see what that one looks like.
now we're going. Now it's coming around. And that third compound, believe it or not, that thing really, really brings it around. Okay, let me finish this fender, and then we'll uh, go to number three. Okay, and then number three, I'm using a 3M pad, uh, waffle type, 3M. And this one looks really good. Uh, nice and thick, and got a nice sharp edge, too, here. Uh, I'm going to run it around the car in some tight spots, just to show you how you can take advantage of a bigger polisher in some uh, very difficult areas. But a nice pad like this, very forgiving, you can get a lot done. Put it in there, and uh, lots of water. Okay, here we go. going to work. Okay, let me finish this fender up. I'm going to run that polisher around the car so you can see how to get it in some uh, some tight spots and some different uh, angles to use that pad. And then uh, we'll take a look at her. Okay, yeah, I think we're there for this one. So just over 40 hours to do this thing complete, shell only. Um, that's block sanding, trizac sanding, and all the different compounds to where we are now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look the car over uh, real complete, make sure I've got everything, uh, because it is really messy, as you can see. Uh, everything looks good. We're going to peel this wrap off and clean it up real good. And let's have a look at her. Okay, got her pulled out in the sunshine here. So... I uh, actually did find some things in there, um, shop lighting conditions, uh, shaded lighting conditions, turn the lights off at night, put a flashlight on her. There's ways to find things in there that you just can't find out in the bright sunshine uh, and correcting those small issues. It took about another 10 hours of various lighting conditions, uh, various pads, and different compounds. We'll take a look at those here in a minute. Uh, but overall, yeah, very happy with the way this turned out. You can see now, uh, looking at the side of it, bouncing reflection off there. The reflection, we have a real sharp image. And that's really a good way to tell a good cut and polish job is how sharp is that reflective image. A little bit wavy in there. Um, could be body work. Uh, could still be a little bit of orange peel conditions. But it's actually so bright out here, it's hard to see what color it is. And then also, let's take a look underneath here. Um, yeah, putting this thing on the rotisserie, uh, able to get in real, real close with our polishing compounds and tooling to uh, separate and get a good transition underneath here. All right, then taking a look at our roof here. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have any clouds today that we can reflect off of here and see the uh, definition and color. So we'll just use this uh, reflection from our roof line on our spray booth and this palm tree here. As we move along, you can see a nice sharp image on there. And that's really what I'm trying to get to uh, without any sanding scratches, any orange peel or any kind of flaws in there. I uh, wish I could say it's as simple as one, two, three, uh, like our system we're using there. But it really is a bit more complicated than that and uh, also takes a lot more time. It, it's not as simple as uh, this compound, that compound, and then finish it up. You'll have to play around with uh, different pads, um, different firmness in your pads, and also some different compounds. I had to use a correcting cream 
uh, by Griots, which did uh, an incredible job tuning up the last little bits of imperfection in there and putting a real nice shine on it. Also, you can just follow up with a polishing glaze and look across our valance here. So we got a real nice reflection on our valance, but you can see now as we reflect from our old orange peel inside our dash here, you can see how our definition uh, yeah, it looks nice, but it's just not quite as cool and a real sharp mirror image. And then our front valance area here. So um, even though this is a small area, you can get a lot of this done with hand sanding. Get your pads in there and just work it with your finger and uh, thumb, press it in there. And then also uh, just using basically a drill with a three inch polishing pad. Also polished up our Vintag just so it can keep up with all this shine going on here. Um, and overall, I'm going to say uh, the polish job I've done here is about 99.7% there, uh, leaving a very small margin for when I complete the car to just go over it one last time for any kind of touch-up. Just leave a little bit of extra material on there to work with, as I'm sure um, we're going to get a little thing here and there as we assemble this car. This is very... Uh, vulnerable now, now that we're in this state. Um, which brings me to my next point uh, on timing. So we have a viewer, Michael from Slovakia. Michael had uh, reached out a while back. Um, I had made known on one of our videos that the next stage on the shell was going to be a cut and polish. And Michael is in the car painting business, so Michael would definitely know the uh, pros and cons of doing this too early or waiting until the car is finished uh, for safety reasons. And what he's talking about here, so um, we put the car in a very vulnerable position, having removed the material, uh, gone in there and done this polish before we assemble. Uh, for me, I'm used to working in these conditions and, and I'm okay with it, I'm comfortable with it. Also, it's in, a, uh, it's in an area with this booth where we don't have any traffic, uh, people aren't walking through it, don't have, uh, family walking through with the groceries that could accidentally brush up against it. It is a dust controlled environment um, so we can keep the dirt and dust out. But uh, Michael's biggest concern is a potential accident during assembly uh, because from here it's going to be very difficult to come back if we have an accident. So uh, for me, got to be very, very careful now. Uh, hopefully we don't have to repair anything. But the reason I've done this now is to take advantage of the rotisserie um, and then also the messing condition. So I like to use a lot of water when I'm compounding. Um, not everybody uses water, that's just something that I do. Uh, but it is messy, you got stuff running down on the inside of the car. You would have sling all in inside our engine compartment here. And then also I can get into areas and tight spots that I just can't get into um, that the car is in, in finished assembly. So that's the reason I did it here. It's not necessarily for everybody under all conditions. So. Um, yeah, definitely give us some thought before you uh, take this on. All right, and then wrapping up today, let's just take a quick look at our uh, polishers and then talk about these uh, compounds here for a second. So uh, our 1, 2, 3 system from 3M, real good basic system to get you started. However, I don't really think that it's enough there to do everything you're going to need to do. Uh, in polishing out your project. Real good basic system to get you started, but you're probably going to need a few more tools in your toolbox and just those three compounds. I purchased this. Uh, this is Griot's Correcting Cream. This stuff is awesome. This is like the magic bullet for just tuning up everything uh, that might be popping through that you didn't quite get out with your polishing system. Actually, uh, going from number one, uh, I used a white foam cutting pad and didn't like it at all had better results with a gray foam cutting pad. Um, I even experimented around with a wool pad and had really good results with that. Uh, number two, coming out of there, um, you're actually better off going to here. Griot's Correcting Cream, eliminating number two, and then going uh, to number three. That's, that's pretty much what I've done here uh, to get what you've just seen. And then as far as the tooling goes, um, I liked our Rupes, or our Rupes, um, or random orbital sander so well, it was so smooth, so well balanced, that I went ahead and got the Mark II random orbital polisher. And the reason I bought this one, uh, I had this one to start with. This is a uh, this is actually a brand new polisher, 
queen by porter cable fairly inexpensive model but not very well balanced and uh, trigger control and uh, just not nearly as smooth as you'd want to do a project like we're doing here so just didn't get along with that one although this is probably fine for a daily driver and then our rotary uh, which one of these is really the best tool for doing a project like this? I'm going to say you need both. You're going to need a rotary and a random orbital because um, each of these do something the other one can't do. And you really need both to get it completely ironed out flat in a super high gloss and get all the imperfections worked out. And then uh, a part supplier for all these tools and compounds, uh, I found uh, Auto Geek and uh, Chemical Guys to be real good suppliers on everything you're going to need to get through your project. They have virtually everything, every tool, every compound, every pad you could possibly want uh, to experiment around with. And the main thing is that you do experiment, uh, do small sections on your car, make sure you've tested the hardness of the paint or whatever type of compound and pads or tools you're using. All right, guys, there she is. She's finally ready for assembly. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.